Hi knitters, welcome to PJ Knits. My name is Penny, I live in central Illinois, and I'm a knitter, a blogger, and a YouTube podcaster. Thank you for coming and stopping by and sitting and um, listening to me chat about knitting. Um, grab your knitting and a cuppa, and let's kick back and let's talk about some knitting. Um, it is December 13th, Wednesday afternoon in central Illinois, and the weather is sunny and 43 degrees here in central Illinois. This is unusual. Um, it's not, it's gonna be 50 degrees in the next couple of days. And, and normally I think it's cold in, in um, central Illinois in the middle of December. And we, you know, sometimes even think about snow and all of that stuff. So I am totally grateful that it's not snowing and that we're having sun shiny out. And, um, you know, a smart woman would put her tennis shoes on and go out and walk after this and take advantage of it. But <laughs> I've been a little bit lazy lately. All I want to do is knit. Anybody else? Um, that's kind of what I've been wanting to do um, for the last few weeks. Um, I don't know. There's something about the season. Like, I think that it should be cold outside. So I'm, you know, I am... Um, snuggling down and it's not super cold <laughs> and I'm just pretending I guess so anyway um, <laughs> enough about the weather in central Illinois um, this episode I was trying to figure out um, of things uh, of, a, of a theme or something and um, I don't know does anybody else have this issue right now of wanting to be knitting on something else but forcing yourself to knit on what you're currently knitting on. I kind of had that that issue the last few days. Um, as much as I love the Advents, I really want to be over with the Advents because I think part of it is because I have been getting some really cool mail um, coming in this week and I want to not knit on my advent and I want to be done with it. The other thing is I'm almost done with my advent blanket that I've been, or my cozy memories blanket that I've been knitting on for years since 2015, adding a square a Sunday. And I'm like really ready to be done with it. I have two squares left in the current row I'm in and I've been vacillating back and forth for the last few days of like when I get done at the end of that final row, I'm done. And then the rest of my advents are all going to go into the border. And so I just can't decide what to do. I really want to be done with it. I really want to be casting on all the stuff that's coming in through the mail right now. And so it's a tough one. It's a tough one. So let's just talk about advent knitting right now for a little bit. Um, I am putting a square every day into my blanket that I've been, like I said, like I've been working on it forever. And at the same time, as I finish a square, and I'm not gonna show you the whole thing right now because there'll be more to follow here, but I put a square in and every day, and then I put one of my stitch markers from the stitch marker advent that I won last year from Grocery Girls in it to signify. And then sometimes I'll just throw in um, an, extra, an extra square and um, from my PYS just to uh, uh, add something to it, but I only have two left. And so now I'm trying to decide whether I, when I get done with the lat next two, if I just wanna be done with it um, and then use it for borders. I'm, I just can't decide what to do. I guess, um, you know, yesterday I was going to be all done with it. And this morning I was like, keep motoring on. You, you've got all, you can do it all the way till the end of the year and then decide and, and just do it. Put another round, another row, which another row is probably, you know, 16 or 17 squares. I don't, I'm not sure I have to count that up, but it is quite large. It has been a fun pattern to do. Like I said, I started it, I think back in 2015, 2016, and um, it's, it's large. The pattern is uh, by Georgie Michaels, Georgie Nicholson, and um, it's been fun, but I'm ready to be done with it. I'm kind of over the whole scrappy one, scrappy, uh, blanket right now um, and uh, I don't know what the next project will be. I do have a habitation throw that's all in um, the colors of the ocean, teals and greens and things like that. So 
probably get back at that, but I'm not going to, in the new year, I'm not going to force myself to do something every Sunday. Um, I'm going to kind of, you know, change it up a bit. So, and then every morning I uh, have a pot of coffee from my Door County Advent, and I love that. It's a whole pot of ground coffee that you get uh, each day, and each day is a new flavor. Um, Kendra, my friend Kendra, just had a great idea. She told me yesterday she'd been making notes of ones that she really, really likes so that she could, if this available, she could order, um, you know, a, a pound of it or a half pound or however it comes, which is a very smart thing to do. And um, I may, you know, another year I may remember that as well. But I am totally having some fun with my Firefly Notes um, stitch marker advent and along with the ones that each day that I open up from the ladies, it's, you know, it's all, it, it's some new yarns to me and different colorways to put into it. it and as it happens, um, as I pull it, it goes into there. Whether it goes, whether it's the same colorway next to it, it goes in there. Um, it doesn't make any difference. So it truly is a scrappy blanket. And when it's done, it'll be so, so warm. So um, that's kind of my, my um, Advent dilemma, or Advent knitting right now. And, uh, um, and that's, that's that. So, um, anyway, um, this Sunday is the third Sunday of Advent, which will be joy. And I hope that you are bringing, uh, having joy is being brought to you by your knitting, by your knitting community. I hope that that is happening for you. I certainly have to say that my knitting community, both in person and virtually, brings me so much joy. I am so thankful that um, I have that knitting community. Um, if you are so inclined and would like to join our Zooms on Saturday nights, uh, the header on the Ravelry group has the link. If you don't do Ravelry, uh, if you want to email me at pjknitspodcast at gmail.com, I can send you the information. We will be Zooming this Saturday night. Um, we will not be Zooming on the 23rd because I will be, um, it's the start really. Uh, people um, are getting together with family and it's really kind of the start of the long, long weekend and the holiday thing. So we will not be Zooming this on the 23rd, but we will um, come back the following Saturday. We are also going to have a special Zoom and we'll talk about that in just a little bit. So anyway, um, Joy is the third Sunday in Advent coming up. So let's talk about some finished objects. Number one <laughs> is a dishcloth. This is number five for me this year. <laughs> and I have knit five of these out of my PYS um, sugar and cream cotton yarn for the most part. And each one goes into my linen closet and not a one's been used yet. And... Um, <laughs> Just because I don't want to get them dirty, <laughs> but maybe I, and maybe in my mind I'm thinking if I needed a really quick gift to take somewhere, I would have dishcloths. But so, and it's a palette cleanser, and it's a fun little project to finish up. Um, and uh, I shared with I think on a Zoom recently when I was knitting on this particular one when I started it, and I'm not going to share it here because it's not. Not all that great, but anyway, that's finished object number um, one. Number two is finally the Sea Salt by Laura Ayler is finished. I love this yarn um, feeling. This is Madeline Tosh DK in the Sea Salt colorway. I love knitting on this. This was fun. This was a different... Um, um, way of knitting it. It was from sleeve to sleeve and then you went down the body. I love it. I love the fit about it. I love the feel of the Madeline Tosh yarn. The thing that I have an issue with with this particular one is I bought the original yarn from our yarn shop Knit for Together that um, probably I bought it in 2015, 2016, maybe even before that. Right when Madeline Tosh was finally available out into the yarn shops, right? And I bought all they had there. And you didn't always get a big quantity. You'd get three or four. So I bought whatever there was in this particular yarn and then set it aside. 
Well, then I decided to do sea salt and I knew that I would not have enough, but I saw that sea salt was still available from, I believe I bought it from Simply Socks. So last summer I bought two extra skeins. What I learned, my learning lesson was, which I already knew this because it happened to me before with a Madeline Tosh yarn. You'd think that you would have remembered that, Penny, <laughs> right? 2015, 2023. The colors are not going to match. And I helical knitted. And I still have very much a break in the garment of where the yarns are so noticeably less beige and more pinkish. So now, if you would, those of you out there who die or have had this happen, do you think that I could tea or coffee dye this to give it a little bit more beige? Have any of you ever done that? I would love to know. Um, otherwise, it's going to be a sweater that I walk on. I walk, walk on, walk in, <laughs> which is fine with me as well. But I think I want to do something to make it wearable every day. And if I can coffee dye it or tea dye it, Never have done that, but I'm just thinking, you know, why, why couldn't I do that? I know that coffee stains. I've had that happen before. So anyway, um, I'd love to know anybody who's done that before. Your thoughts. Uh, anyway, I use five skeins total on this. Almost all of five skeins. I knit the size medium, which is a 43.7 finish measurement. And I love the length. I love the width. I love, I did have to do, I started with the seven. This one, if you remember, I had a couple of starts on it. I started it and went all the way up here, and I knew right away it was going to be too tight in the arms, right? So I ripped it back out, and I went back up to a size 7 needle. So I used a 7 needle, and um, that helped a lot. I think I, at that time I went up, um, well, I can tell you, because I have in my journal... <laughs> I have all my notes, and I will have notes on my Ravelry project page, um, PJ Knits 1. Um, yes, I went to a size 7. I recast it on to 43.7, which is the M2. Um, I did a gauge swatch in this. I did it on a smaller needle to start with, and um, that's when I discovered that it was going to be too... Um, too small in the arms. So that's when I went up a larger needle on it up to a size 7. Pretty much um, stayed with the um, pattern exactly. Did a, some in a little bit lengthening of it for me because I like it to be a little bit longer. But the most for the most part, I completed it for the pattern. And so it just feels good sitting here in it. Um, and uh, podcasting in it. So I just really, I like it. I like the pattern. I like the construction method of it. Um, I don't like the result of the two yarns not being um, the same, even with helical knitting. It has a split hem. Um, I was surprised at this, didn't even realize that uh, while I was knitting. I thought at some point in time we would be connecting those, and that's part of the pattern, as long as a split hem. Oops. Split hem here. And so you can see where the, the difference went here in this. I would love to maybe, even if I could, just dunk this part. Because it really has the striping effect. Um, so, you know, lesson learned again. I think that's one of the things, too, that I am discovering more and more is um, I love the hand-dyed yarns. But I think... I think for me, going forward, I really have to, on this type of yarn, um, I ha really have to limit them to, um, you know, shawls and socks um, and um, other things. That, or if you take a yarn, put something else with it, that, like a light and a dark together, that will mask the difference in the, um, in the dyeing. I think I really kind of discovered that. You know, and made that realization in my mind for my knitting going forward that um, as much as I like the hand-dyed ones and, uh, and the indie dyers and the, I love the way they turn out, I really have to think about those going forward if sweaters are the, is, are the direction that I want um, for those. So 
Um, and then my next, uh, my next finished object, and this was another learning lesson for me. A couple of things that I learned in the last few days on this one is, number one, do not try and do all the doll knits, you know, a week and a half before Christmas. And, um, well, don't do the doll knits, Penny. <laughs> I made a little poncho <laughs> for my youngest granddaughter's um, 18 inch doll and um, I was I was going to do a hat but I didn't have enough yarn and when I got the other yarn to go with it same thing it was such a noticeable difference and it may be just a doll hat but I wanted it um, I wanted it to coordinate so I'm like okay I'm done she's just getting a poncho and I bought the clothes from Amazon moving on I don't sew doll clothes I don't knit doll clothes going forward. <laughs> that's just the realization, and that's just the thing that's happening from now on. Um, this was uh, American Girl Poncho. It's a free pattern. It was easy. It was fun to do. Um, it was by Elaine Phillips. It is a free pattern um, through ABC Knitting. I used Cascade Wave yarn on it um, from my PYS leftovers on a size 6 needle and then um, then I changed to a size 7 16 inch needle because I was too lazy to um, do an interchangeable to get that so I think it's cute I think it turned out and little and the little little dolly will have now a poncho to keep her warm and that's it grandma's not doing any more of those <laughs> um those are my finished objects. Now, I think part of the problem of me wanting to knit other things right now and why I'm over the blanket, over the, the knitted doll clothes, is the last few days, the super cool mail call purchases that have been coming in. And they have made me want to knit for myself. Knit those sweaters for winter, even though it's not 20 below, I still... I have the urge to cast on other things. And so I think that's part of my problem. That's part of the problem. So anyway, let's start with the mail call. First up, I got a chip basket. I don't have any project in it right now. I have some yarn that I received. But isn't this so cool? It is the chip basket all set to go with the coffee cups in it. I'm just super Merry Christmas to me. <laughs> so I received that in the mail, and then I received from Susan, also known as Pink Shawl Girl, a lovely surprise gift. Um, she sent it in thanks, and thank you, Susan. I mean, this was such a, um, a fun surprise, and, and you did not have to do that. I, I totally enjoyed um, being surprised by it. She sent me a lovely um, Snoopy... Uh, ornament that's Snoopy sitting on a rainbow that's on my Snoopy tree over there, my Snoopy Christmas tree. And then she sent me some yarns and she knows the colors that I love. And this is Hopscotch 2 Sock Yarn. Received this. This is a scrumptious yarn. And the, isn't that beautiful? That is such the blues and, and it's soft and the color and so much the colors of the sea, isn't it? I, I can't wait to, it's so squishy. So I, super, so I'm putting it in my pit, my chip bag, chip bag. <laughs> and then she sent me three skeins of Angel's Kiss. It's an alpaca yarn. Alpaca is my favorite fiber um, of all times. This is um, 60 alpaca, 40% merino in ocean tones. Oh my gosh, that's going to be gorgeous. Totally hitting. I'm going to have to hide it from my, my oldest granddaughter, who is now a teal fan, <laughs> which I love. How did that happen? <laughs> Thank you, Susan, so very, very much. I do appreciate that. That was, that was such a wonderful gift, and, and it was such a surprise as well. I also received from um, Luann. A gift in via Ravelry and um, she let me choose a pattern I sent she received some of the minis 
and again, Luann, you did not have to do that. Um, it was it was it was fun creating that bag for you. Um, she uh, let me choose a pattern from Ravelry, and so I chose simple stripes um, from Suvi Knits. I'm a fan of her patterns, and again, I've been tossing around, you know, Advent for maybe in the future years, or just some stripes, just some. Um, stripe fingering weight yarn from PYS, right? So thank you, Luann. That I, I do appreciate that was that was a wonderful gift and and thank you for watching and thank you for commenting on Instagram and staying in touch. Um, you know, another one of those friends that were you you and me via knitting via um, virtual. The, what will we do without Instagram and Ravelry and all of those things that, that bring us all together. So thank you so much. Um, <clears throat> I also received today, just today, um, my Holst yarn order, and it is my, when I, when I ordered the yarn, I knew, I knew, I pretty wish, I ordered specifically for this pattern, because I wanted, um, to knit something, um, get started on knitting out of the Grand Shetland Adventure Knits book by Gudrun Johnston and Mary Jane Mucklestone. I got my copy from Around the Table Yarns some time ago, talked about this last time. And I want to knit this pullover by Gudrun Johnston. It's called Lucky Lines. And this particular sweater is done out of the Holst Super Soft yarn. So I wanted to try something out of the book, along with I wanted to try the Super Soft yarn from Holst. And so they had a sale Black Friday back in November and it came today. This one is called Fountain. And you see a theme in my colorways, you know. It's you know, it's kind of hard to see um on the computer the colorways. And so um it very similar to a lot of colors that I have, but you know what? I I'm going to try it and I'm going to try this pattern. So that's another reason that I, I you know, I, I want to be knitting on something else. I don't want to say this, I don't want this to sound like it's going to sound. I apologize to start with, but I'm over the Christmas knitting. I'm ready to knit sweaters for me. And, you know, that's part of the things you can do, you know, knit what you want to. So I received that today. And so I'm going to, I need to swatch for that. I um, purchased extra yarn so that I could do that. Um, I'm just super stoked about about that purchase that came today. There's a lot of Merry Christmas going on here for PJ, right? She's she's uh, for sure um, buying for herself, right? Um, as we said before, why not? Then I know I'm gonna I know I'm gonna like it. I know it's gonna fit, right? <laughs> so, and then next up from Lost City Knits, I ordered yarn part of the yarn for for I think and this is another one I am so wishy-washy about my knitting I think that's the piece of it is I wanted to knit this sweater then I thought oh this color would be great for our hap along and then I'm like when I got the yarn I want to knit the sweater I'll have sufficient to knit for the sweater or the half haven't made my decision up totally but as of today I'm leaning towards the sweater and purchase most of the colorways for up here today for this sweater by Ella Gordon it's called the Hattie Yoke I'm almost 50% sure it's going to be this sweater I I ordered um, a cone of yarn of the yarn of the actual base yarn too that's coming from somewhere else and I ordered that um, I haven't gotten it yet so I haven't made you know solidified that decision but I'm 50% sure today that it's going to be this sweater and again look at this remember when I was talking about my hat that I knit last time it was really kind of based on an inspiration see I'm not the only one that does that so 
I, res I bought that. I got that yarn. It came so quick, and I got a super cute little gift from Denise. Thank you, Denise. I love you, too. But here's the colorways. I'm not going to take it out of the plastic, but in the new year, you'll see more as we decide. Well, I could some of it. Oh, my gosh, you guys. The base yarn is not in here, and then one other, I believe. But look at this. Now, this is my problem. I bought for the sweater, but I also bought sufficient that if I want to do my hat shawl out of it, I could. Hmm. <laughs> oh, guys, I just love it. So that was ordered. Uh, this is the um, Jameson and Smith. Um, you can get this. We're kind of the sunshine's coming coming around here, guys. Sorry about that. There we go. From Lost City Knits, so I'm I, I'm vacillating over that. But it is either going to be the sweater, or it's going to be the Hansel by Gudrun Johnston. One or the other. I have yarn for this if I need to. I have yarn for this if I need to. <laughs> oh, the decisions that have to be made by a knitter, <laughs> right? I'm really leaning towards this sweater. Even though I have two other color work sweaters in the in the pipe or, or on the needles, you know, in the whip in the whip bag. So <laughs> anyway. Oh gosh. <laughs> the dilemmas, <laughs> right? So, you can see my dilemma, and you can see why I want to be knitting on all the things. Tell me I'm not the only one. Tell me that you are just like me, that you are so ready to be knitting on um, sweaters for yourself. Anyway, um, last thing I want to share with you. Well, two things. I shouldn't say that. I forgot about the hap along. Let's talk about the hap along before we uh, scoot off to the very last thing. Um, hap along is going to happen. We're going to just cast on the 1st of January. We will be having a 6 p.m. Central Illinois time Zoom on the 1st that night for those of you who want to join in on the hap along. Um, th again, the link is in the Ravelry group at the header. Um, if you don't do Ravelry, email me. I'll send you the link. Whips, yes, certainly. Um, do whips. And if you just want to stop by on the first and just see what we're all thinking about knitting on or casting on, feel free to do that too. Um, you know, dip your toe in it and see if it's if if it's for you. Um, I am going to do the Hansel by Gudrun Johnston. I have decided that. Um, I am pretty sure. Again, that I'm going to do some yarn that I have in PYS that was that I bought from Lost City Knits um, some years ago to, to do a new hat. That, the one I showed you before that had the green center. I'm pretty sure that that's where, I'm, where I am headed. Um, so I hope that those of you will uh, that want to do a hat will come and um, hap along with us in the new year. We will be doing that. Um, at the end of the year, we'll be talking about the Burra Cowl again. I've not done any more on mine. Um, I'm wondering if there's any hope for that. I Again, um, it sits there mocking me. <laughs> but, <laughs> oh wait, that's, uh, uh, feel free to cast on new stuff, Penny. <laughs> it's your knitting and you're the only one that um, can tell you not to, right? Um, I have one whip that's in progress that I wanted to share. This is the April Cardigan by Petite Knit. Um, the yarn is yarn I bought at Montreal at Knit City from Sonder Yarn in their parade colorway. It is in this, um, the Haze and Muse. And when I was knitting on this, the increases, I was probably cursing a little bit at the increases, thinking, oh my gosh. Once I got done with those first set of increases and I saw what the shoulder treatment was looking like, I'm like, I am totally loving her thought process in there. And I can't wait to see how it develops. 
now that I'm that I'm making some good decisions, I can motor on. That's where I was last time, you know, I showed this. And so it's going to be a cardigan. I um, I'm doing the extra large on a size six needle. I'm right now I am getting gauge with be, without it being um, totally totally blocked. Um, I just I'm just loving the feel of this. It's the Surrey alpaca, and the other one has a little bit of um, linen in it. So every once in a while you see these brown flecks, and you're like, oh, you need, I want to pick those out, but I'm not. I'm trying hard not to, and I'm just loving the color in this. This is going to be one of those sweaters that I, it'll be interesting that I, it's a v-neck um, cardigan and I'm looking forward to it because I think it'll just be super comfy to put on when it does get cold um, to throw on around the house or go out in or you know just early spring to sit out right on the porch with. So that is my whip right now. Um, that's all the things that I have sitting around here that I wanted to talk to you about. Um, lastly, podcast and vlogs. You know, I right from the get-go, I I love to watch um, the Christmas vlogs and um, in the past. And I'm behind right now. Um, um, I'm not watching them every day, but I'm watching them periodically when I need a little something. And and I think maybe that's just because of you know. Um, there's so many things to um, capture our attention when it comes to vlogs, but um, there's there's a lot out there, and I'm and um, I'm having fun watching them here and there. I'm not even caught up at all on um, Arne and Carlos yet. I was watching them this morning, and I'm not caught up on them. And usually, I was watching them all the time. So I'm going in spurts and um, starts of, of of the vlogs that I'm watching. Sometimes I'll watch one. And then I'll skip a couple days and come back and then um, watch another one. But um, one of the things, um, a podcast that I find found um, via um, Instagram and, and, um, and just uh, uh, comments that she made um, on Instagram. But I wanted to just let you all know about one called My Wool Mitten. It's Carrie. Um, she um, has a small Shetland sheep farm. Um, in the Lower Peninsula of Michigan. And um, she commented on one of our videos when we were talking about, when I was talking about the Shetland and um, yarns and things like that. Shetland Sheep and Carrie, she has a lovely um, podcast that I love watching, talking about her sheep and showing them and and just, um, it intrigues me, Carrie. So um, I, I hope you all will head out there to YouTube and, and um and check her podcast out as well. Um, me, I'm intrigued because, you know, she had me at Shetland, right? And it's sheep. It's a farm. I'm a city girl. So um, the closest I've ever been to a farm is an uh, animal farm, you know, in East Peoria where the, we could take the kids and they could pet the donkeys and the sheep and, and um, things like that. Um, when I was a kid, my um, cousins lived out in the country and they had a horse and the horse was was mean <laughs> and so that's the closest I got to a farm but it still intrigues me because you know the sheep because it's our craft right and the yarn comes from um, the sheep so I, I really enjoy watching Carrie um, and seeing um, seeing her farm and um, um, kudos to her for um, for her endeavor as well so it's just fun I'm learning something this city girl who does not like you know what M-O-U-S-E's so I would never make it in the country for sure, but I, but I sure do like to watch other other people as well. So um, check that one out if you will. Um, coming up next month for sure, um, my friend Kendra is going to be a special guest. She's going to come on, and we're going to talk about knitting journals. She's been doing hers this year, and I've been doing mine again this year. And so we're going to we're going to talk about journals and, and some knitting and some other things, hopefully. So um, I hope that you will um, come back in um, in the new year. I may do one more podcast at the end of the year, kind of, sort of, um, just depends on where I'm going with my knitting and, and what's happening here. Um, one never knows. But otherwise, um, um, I will see you in the new year for sure. Um, thank you 
I hope that you all have a wonderful, healthy, safe um, holiday season. Um, <clears throat> thank you for being here, um, watching me, listening to me, commenting, and for being my knitting friend. I appreciate you all. Um, and I do know, I do know how it is for some people at the holidays, but I hope this holiday brings you joy and, um, you know, reach out if you need, if you need, um, somebody, we hope you will do that. So, um, thank you very much. I have, um, just a little something that I want to close with from the power of knitting by Loretta Napolini, Napolini, Napoleoni. <laughs> and again, this is a recommendation some time ago. Um, from from Joyce and I read the book, but I just kind of highlighted some things and I wanted to share this with you um, She talks about her many adventures in this book um, Loretta does and one of the things and again, this comes right back um, to The Shetland Faroe Islands, etc. It says she says in here. I can picture Kettle's wife spinning and knitting day and night during the harsh and dark winter in the Faroe Islands not in desperation, but with hope. I love to knit and write. Both heal my pain, keep me company in the solitude I have chosen to retreat into, and ease the numbness of my feelings. I have chosen from our survival kit to heal our despair, and I'm going to add to knit <laughs> through that. I hope you're not having any despair, though. I hope that you're having joy in your knitting. I hope that you are knitting what you want to. And I hope you'll come back. Thanks for watching. Bye.